Hey, I'm Kurt the Arborist, owner and operator of Cochrane Tree Care, and I'm here to talk to you about how to respond to negative reviews. Online reviews are really important to me and our business. I find having a number of positive reviews can really help and set you apart from the competition like other guys in town. If people see that you have a lot more reviews than they do, they can make you seem more established and that you've been around a bit longer. It's more reputable that they have more positive reviews. Going into negative reviews, obviously you want to avoid those, so try and keeping them all five star if possible is the best case scenario. I haven't had very many online negative reviews, maybe one. I've had a few four stars, which were concerning because I'm obviously going for a complete five star review across the board. So anything less than five star, I consider negative, which I want to try and improve upon. Should you reply to negative reviews? My answer is yes, you definitely need to reply to negative reviews, even more so than positive reviews. You want to be replying to those negative reviews as soon as possible because there's some sort of reason there that the person is complaining and it's often that they're unhappy about something and they want to be acknowledged, they want to feel like that whatever their concern is is validated by you. Even if you didn't feel like you've done anything wrong or there was miscommunication, it's important to get on that right away. Here are six steps to follow. Number one, respond quickly to negative reviews to show customers that their problem is a priority. The customer who has the issue knows that they're being heard and being validated for whatever they feel might be wrong. Even if you don't feel like you've done anything wrong or maybe it's just a little bit of miscommunication, it's good to get that and nip it in the butt right away and figure out what's happened and what you can do about it. Number two, address the reviewer by name, say thank you and acknowledge their complaint. You want to address people by their name and say thank you so that they know that you're personalizing your response to them and you're not being generic and putting out cookie cutter response like you would maybe in other situations. These people are feeling likely unheard or not validated in what has gone on and if you personalize it, they're going to feel like it's more about them. Number three, apologize and empathize without assigning blame. We've had complaints before and as hard as it is to not take it personally, we do our absolute best to apologize and empathize with these customers right away. In the case where you might be feeling a little bit angry if you have somebody that you work with, perhaps a spouse or coworker that can help you with these complaints, maybe they can take it on and discuss with the customer and reach out to them initially so there isn't emotion on that side to just understand what the customer has going on. Number four, own the problem. Owning the problem, regardless of what happened, is so important. It's basically a battle you're never going to win as a business. If a customer has a problem, even if it seems like fantasy to you, you need to own up to it, apologize and empathize, and try and make things right. Number five, make things right by taking things offline. It's important to take things offline as soon as possible so you can get the true depiction of what happened in the customer's point of view, perhaps through a phone call or even in person, without that veil of the artificial internet, I guess you'd say, where people feel like they can just vent their problems without being accountable for them. When we take things offline, we usually follow up with a phone call and we start off by listening to the complaint and what's gone on. We don't make excuses. We may take an opportunity, if possible, to explain our side of the story in a professional way if they're open to hearing it. But otherwise, we spend the time mostly just listening and trying to find a solution and literally ask them what's going to make them happy. Number six, ask the customer to update their review. We will always try and ask the customer to update the review, but only if things have gone well with solving the problem. So it's important to make the customer feel like they've been heard, ask them what's going to make them happy, find a solution for that problem, whether it means refunding the money or perhaps refunding their money and returning to finish the job or do whatever it is that's going to make them happy. And then at that point, once everything's calmed down, ask them to please refine their review online. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something. Be sure to check out some other videos on Jobber Academy.